California. Mm-hmm. Why haven't you left yet? Why are you still in California? This is where I'm from. My friends are there. My, my church is there. My memories are there. Um, and frankly, if you are, live in California, you bought a home, say, in the 80s, you're doing very, very well. Your house, house is appreciated like crazy. Uh, I got a lot of equity in my in my home, so I'm living living quite well, uh, as long as I avoid the homeless people and the uh, and the needles and yeah. I'm serious about that. I live in a very nice place in Hollywood Hills. I could go maybe two or three blocks, and on either side of the street are a bunch of vans full of people who should Hollywood be living Hills. There. Yeah, Hollywood Hills shouldn't be living there. Um, there's a really real bad homeless problem in, in the area where I live. Um, Antonio Villaraigosa, by the way, after the recall was over, said. I've never seen L.A. look so dirty. I've never seen so much homelessness. He didn't say anything during the recall, but he said it afterwards. Uh, it's, it's pretty pathetic. Um, and the Bay Area is even worse. What happened to it? I mean, it, it, for a guy that's been there your entire life, yeah. I lived there 24 years. Vinny lived there, I don't know how many years. 15 years? Tom, you lived there how many years? 40. 40 years. So we're all California natives. He's a Florida guy. He's actually an Addison guy, Addison, Texas guy, born and raised in Addison, <laughs> Texas. Miami, but but I <laughs> by, love for by, by, by way of Addison. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's so true. that's trolling me. The, right the, the evolution of this great state that every the California dreaming, right? right? Everybody, mamas and papas, everybody right. wanted to go right. to this place. What happened to it? Single party government, Democrats. Uh, Democrats control the assembly, the Senate. They have two thirds majority. Uh, Republicans need not even show up for work. They pass one job-killing bill after another, one freedom-sapping bill after another. They're in bed with the teachers' union. They're in bed with the environmentalists. Uh, and they've just passed one law after another that's undermining the middle class. W- very wealthy people can survive. Very poor people can survive. It's the middle class people who are leaving. And, and, uh, and Larry— the, the average price of a home in, in California is 175 percent above the national average. Think about that. The number one reason that people cite for leaving is they cannot afford to buy a house. Mm-hmm. And they have no idea why. They just know they can't afford to buy one. That's why when people leave California and go to places like Colorado and Arizona, uh, they start ch- changing those states because they still vote Democrat because they haven't connected the dots. Hold on, they still vote Democrat yeah. when they leave the state? <clears throat> they haven't connected the dots. They don't, they don't know why. All they know is that things are not I, – I can't, I can't get the kind of lifestyle that I want. I can get a better lifestyle in, in this state, that state, mm-hmm. that state, but they have no idea why. Yeah, so they're just attributing it to the cost of living. Yeah, That's it. or, or, or yeah. whatever. And wh- how much is the average house in California compared to the national? Uh, I think the average price of a home in California is about 800000 Yep, seven forty one. Look at that. Yeah. Didn't, I didn't insane. even see that, and I did it already. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Are you right. impressed? To, Are you impressed? To back up what uh, Larry's <laughs> talking about, go take a look at the history of Colorado, Phoenix, and Austin. Excuse me, Denver, Phoenix and Austin, it's exactly what he's talking about, where they move in and they turn red to lavender and then blue. I figured it'd be the exact opposite. People leaving California being like, I can't take the restrictions. I can't take the taxes. I can't take the regulation, the homelessness, everything just combined. It's like, I'm out of here. I'm going to go live my life. I'm an independent thinker and move to a state where I can just do me. But you're basically saying, no, they're just going to continue their left-leaning policies, yeah, that yeah. even in uh, in spend some time really in Austin. They, they, they have indoctrinated people in California to believe Republicans are just bad people, gotcha. uh, and anything Republican is bad. I mean, we're I'm, I'm pro-life, therefore I'm anti-woman. That's how that's how mm-hmm. that's how they phrase it. Um, I believe taxes are too high, therefore I'm for the rich. I mean, that's what they do, and they have they have indoctrinated a whole generation of of, of people, young mm-hmm. people in California, to feel that way. Let, let, let me ask this question, Tom. This goes to you and uh, to Larry. So, do, do you think, uh, 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 you know, we had teachers protesting against DeSantis here, mm-hmm. and they're saying, you know, Florida anti woke uh, agenda is causing us to want to leave the state of Florida? And, you know, some people in Florida are like, great, go to California, right? Where, where you belong. Yeah. So, so do, you, <laughs> do you think more uh, uh, Democrats are leaving red states because they can no longer be there and they're finding blue states? Or do you think more? conservatives, Republicans are leaving blue states, finding red states to go to? I think a little bit of both. But I think that surely the, the red states are the ones that are growing. Uh, you look at, there's a map that shows you where taxes are, taxes are going, uh, and they're going to red states. Uh, I think people feel the schools are better. Uh, there's, there's less regulation, uh, lower cost of living, greater economic opportunity. So I think both both. Republicans and Democrats are leaving for those reasons. I just think that Democrats have not figured out that there is a reason why these things are are causing you to leave. I, I would I would agree with that. My independent research would say it's probably seven to three 
Seven is the conservatives. Are so Tom's against. a fact check guy. When you say something, is it that no, 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 Tom's no, no, no. Mr. Wikipedia Tom, Tom, is what we call it. But, but it's very, this. very impressive. No, seriously. Oh well, thank you very yeah. much. Uh, my my wife got out of college, Cal State Northridge, and uh, she started teaching. So she was at LA Unified, which for other people is oh a lar- is the <laughs> largest school district in the United States, and it's actually too car- too large to self manage. And the teachers union there, um, very, very blue, but very, very upset. And these teachers have been leaving, and they've been going to Phoenix, and they've been going to Riverside, even, and out to, to areas where they feel that they can get a, that they can be a teacher with a better cost of living. And so my informal analysis of it is I'm seeing eight to two or seven to three. Uh, to your question, I, I, I agree, it's a little and, bit and, of both. And Tom, I mentioned uh, Villaraigosa earlier, the former mayor of of L.A. When he was ran, running the first time. His wife um, is a is a um, teacher at LAUSD, mm-hmm. and he was asked, "Why don't you have your own kids at LAUSD?" I remember you're, this, you're, you're, and the you're, wall you're, in front you're, of his you're house. A big, you're a big proponent of, of public schools. You oppose school choice, and he said, and I quote, "I would never sacrifice my kid by putting my kid in an wow. LAUSD school." Wow! And he but I'm not, running for mayor of this fine city, and he and he did not win because of that comment. Wow. Well, at least he was being honest. At least he's honest, yeah. yeah. At least yeah. he's honest. At least he's not telling the... And by the way, it's so funny you're saying this. We're talking about California. I'm actually really curious. And the reason why I'm asking this question is because which one is outwardly blue, but internally they feel safer in a red state, right? Because think about it. Socialists feel safer in a capitalistic society, right? They don't want to leave this place. If you really feel safer being in a socialist society, go to a socialist country. Why stay in America? So I think more red is willing to leave blue, and I don't think blue leaves red. I think blue feels safer in red, while red doesn't feel safer in blue because they're not welcome. I think you're making it uh, more complicated than the other. I think it's just a lot of hypocrisy. For example... Uh, there was a study some years ago where uh, government school teachers, that's a term I prefer instead of public school, government school teachers were asked, with school-age kids were asked, where you put your own kids. Nationwide, 10% of us have our kids in private school. 6% of black families do. 49% of Philadelphia public school teachers with school-age kids had their own kids in private school. 39% Chicago public school teachers with school-age kids put their own kids in private school. The head of the Chicago Teachers Union recently said that school choice was racist. <laughs> Her own kid is in private school. I have it's a just, question. It's just hypocrisy. Let me stay on this. Yeah. By the way, Rank hypocrisy. stats came up j- just to uh, yes, uh, 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 Brandon and I were doing this video to see during COVID top 10 highest tax, ta- uh, tax states and the bottom lowest tax states. OK, during COVID, the top 10 highest tax states lost three hundred and forty one billion dollars of AGI. OK, tax revenue. The mm-hmm. top 10 right. lost three forty one. OK. Guess what the bottom 10 lowest tax states gained? $341 billion. Mm -hmm. Did you understand what what just happened right there? It's a swap. It's a swap. (laughs) It's like you move $341 billion of money under management at Goldman to Morgan Stanley. That's exactly what happened. So COVID was a great case study for us to see what works, what doesn't work. My concern right now with a state like California, do you think a California, uh, uh, how quickly do you think a California could flip? And if yes, what would be the reason for it to flip? If I knew the answer to that, you'd be talking to me from Sacramento. I don't know. I, I, I liken the average voter in California to a drug addict. you got to hit rock bottom and start, and start rethinking your votes. I've never been a favor, uh, in favor of, of term limits. Uh, I'm now in favor of term limits for voters. If you vote Democrat two or three times, you lose your right to vote. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's you know, funny. I, uh, I, I just thought that at some point— even left-wing voters in California would go, you know what, i, I got to go a different way. But they haven't. When I was running, a, um, the wife of a retired Motown record mogul, uh, she's in her 80s, he's in his 80s, uh, was murdered. He had armed security at his house, some guy who shouldn't have been on the street, one of these life, lifelong criminals, broke into the house, shot and killed her. Uh, a UCLA graduate student uh, was working at a a uh, high-end furniture store in an area of L.A. called Hancock Park where Maxine Waters has her mansion. She was stabbed to death by another homeless guy. And I thought maybe at this point, maybe some people on the left might rethink their assumptions, but they haven't. And Larry, what, so, do you, what do you think it is from, from like all those cities? Is it just the indoctrination is so strong? Like if you're living in Chicago, Baltimore, New York, San Francisco, and you're seeing everything, is it just like, listen, uh, we're not going to admit that with this is shit. We're going to stick with it because Democrats, they fall on the sword. They stay yeah. loyal to the party. It's like, no, we're, we're good. I, I think it's that. It's indoctrination. It's, it's, 
that plus a belief Republicans are just bad people. Mm -hmm. We just can't. It's not that we disagree about uh, about abortion, about taxes, about spending. We are bad people, fundamentally bad people. They've convinced people that way. Well, this goes back to something we talk about all the time, and that's, you know, why do people vote? Do they vote for personality or do they vote for policy? I would argue that it's overwhelmingly about personality, right? So you could go the policy argument all you want, right? Taxes, regulation. But if you don't have a charismatic candidate on the left, or on the right, mm-hmm. running it, like you're never going to win. It's just not going to happen. People vote I, on I, personality. I don't, I don't see it that way. I, I think people vote mostly on what they perceive to be their best interest. Uh, often they're wrong about that, but they but they vote on what they perceive to be in their best interest. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.